Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. Tonight's video is going to be on chemiluminescence. What is it? And how does it work? Basically, what chemiluminescence is, is it's two chemicals that when mixed together, produce light. This all started back in the 1960s um, when scientists were interested in being able to mix things together to produce light. And they got their inspiration from bioluminescence, where uh, different species uh, produce light on their own. For example, a lightning bug. So they started tinkering around and they figured out that when you mix a couple different things together, it produces light. So they figured this out and in the 1970s is when these products are starting to be produced and used by the military and just used by general public. One story um, that floats around about how glow sticks became so popular with the party scene is back in the 70s, uh, the son of a uh, factory worker who was working in a factory producing these glow sticks he got a whole backpack, backpack um, full of these glow sticks and went to a Grateful Dead concert and snapped them and started throwing them around. And the people were so amazed at this, this glowing stick that they had never seen before or never knew about were just bewildered. They were, they were amazed by this. And the show, um, according to the story, just kind of stopped for a little bit as people just kind of threw these light sticks around and were just completely amazed by it. Um, but basically, um, the two chemicals are in this housing. So you have a plastic housing here that bends just a little bit. And inside this plastic housing, there's two things. You have a liquid, which you can see moving around in there. And then what's probably going to be extremely difficult to see on camera, but you can see it when you hold this in your hand and look with your eye. There's a little glass ampule in there, and that little glass ampule has another chemical inside of it. So basically, when you bend this tube, it snaps that glass ampule in there, and that chemical inside it reacts with the, the chemical that's inside the plastic tube, and it will produce light. What are the benefits of these? Well, they're self-contained. You don't need any batteries to stick in this and make it work. You buy a package, you put it in a bag, put it in a drawer, several years go by and it still works. So it's self-contained, you don't need anything else to make it work. It will work anywhere. It's weatherproof, so wind doesn't affect it, water doesn't affect it. You can take these things underwater. They have a uh, a long shelf life. They can last up to about, uh, according to the manufacturer, uh, they expire within X amount of time and generally, depending on manufacturers, it's um, about one to five years or so. But even, you know, you get to that five year mark, it's not like the thing's just not going to work. It'll still work, but the intensity of the light that it produces might not be as good as what it could be two years after it was produced. They're non-flammable, so you can use these in environments where there's um, flammable gas. Let's say, for example, a natural disaster, like tornado comes through, rips all the houses away, and you got a bunch of natural, uh, natural gas just kind of floating around. You can snap these things all day long, throw them around in that gas environment, and not have any worry about these cause an explosion, whereas if you take other um, other lighting sources, um, you could potentially uh, create an explosion by just turning a flashlight on um, in a gas environment. You can buy these things online. This particular company, uh, Siloom, you can go to siloom.com. You can order direct from them. You can 
go on, of course, to Amazon and, and find these type of products. However, when you start getting into Amazon, you are then also going into the more commercialized or civilianized type of products, uh, like little kitty uh, bracelets and stuff. So you may find some lower grade type of products on places like Amazon, but you can also find the good um, public service uh, grade type of sticks or military grade type of sticks. Of course, if you go to a um, army surplus store, you would be able to find these things there, a flea market kind of place that has a little surplus place in there would have it. Um, for for these, uh, Walmart has these, and as you can see, the package says 97 cents. They sell these things um, at Halloween time for little kids. You attach them to a little kid and, and see them run around in the dark. Well, Walmart doesn't keep their Halloween aisle up all year long, so after Halloween, is over with they take all their Halloween products and they throw them in these baskets and they put them kind of like near the front door area and they put signs on there saying 50% off and so you'll find like a bunch of makeup and masks and, and little stuff like that but you also find these things because these are in the Halloween aisle so you can take these 97 cent glow sticks mark them down 50% off and you can find I found a whole um, hand basket I went and got a hand basket and I filled the whole thing up with these things. Um, and I can't remember now what all I paid total for them, but it was not much at all. And I have a whole bag full of these things. I've taken them, I've put them in the, in, you know, like the kitchen drawer, bathroom drawer, nightstand in the bedroom. Just, you know, kind of scatter them, scatter them all around the house. That way if the light goes out um, and it's going to be off for a few hours, well, I got... A bunch of little cheap glow sticks that I can snap and just kind of litter around the house and light the house up. You can find these in obviously any sporting goods uh, type of stores. Um, going back to Walmart, you go back to the outdoor section of Walmart, you're going to find glow sticks back there. Uh, go to Dick's, Cabela's, Bass Pro, any of those type of places, you're going to find glow sticks. Um, generally these little six inch, uh, sticks are going to be the norm. You can also find little tiny glow sticks that probably about that long and then they're really thin. Fishermen use those. You can attach them to the bobbers. So when you go fishing at night, you got this little glow stick sitting on the bobber. And when you see, of course, the little glow stick start bouncing up and down, you know, you got a fish. Uh, you also have actually some uh, tactical teams starting to use those things now. And I'll kind of talk about the uses of glow sticks and I'll just kind of mention uh, what I mean by, you know, the tactical use of them. So uh, the uses, basically anything you need light for is what you're going to use these things. These produce light in a omnidirectional. Um, it's 360 degrees. So when the power goes out and you need light inside the house, you can hang these from your ceiling fixture, hang them from there, illuminate the room. You can hang them off door handles in the, in the hallway to illuminate your hallway or even illuminate your bedroom. Um, hang them in the closet, illuminate that, hang them up in the garage, uh, hang it up from the garage door opener thing, um, or hang them from a shelf whatever, and they're going to illuminate um, reasonably well, enough for you to, to, to walk through and not stub your toe on something something harsh. It's not going to be like nice LED lighting inside or anything, but just enough to get you by. Um, for camping needs or anything like that, you can hang these from the center of your tent. Um, you could also uh, hang them from or attach them to the zipper on your tent door uh, from the inside. So A, you're illuminating the inside of your tent, but B, you're also knowing that that chem stick is attached to the zipper of your 
uh, tent flap. So you just grab the stick and pull and you're getting out of the tent in the middle of the night if you need to. Um, of course you can use it to eliminate inside of vehicles, um, small enclosures, stuff like that. Basically anything you need to light an area up for, that's your need for. You can also use them as marking things, marking trails or passages, sort of thinking of these as like breadcrumbs. Uh, you can leave a series of glow sticks along a path and create a little uh, trail of Kim sticks to let people know what direction you went to. So if you're on a hiking trail and you come to a fork in the trail, you can throw a Kim stick um, at the very beginning of the trail that goes to the left and then a few more feet in drop another one so that way when people come up on that fork they can look left and see a couple chem sticks going to the left but if they look to the right they won't see anything and logic should say that hey this person went to the left and they can go that way and find you same concept with the cave uh, cavers like using these because you can mark a passages. Um, you can leave a trail of chem sticks uh, down passageways to mark where you've been at. That way, if something happens and people come looking for you, they're not wasting their time going down all these different passages. They see a trail of chem lights, they follow it, and they find you. Um, you can mark... Um, like landing zones, you can use these as um, a way to light up a landing zone. You can use them as um, road flares, so to speak. The company actually makes a specific uh, glow stick for that purpose. It's actually a lot thicker than this, and it has a little band across the top, and it has these two little thin metal wires on the side that you can pull out as like a little stand and it would basically just sit kind of like a little uh, lean-to type of position and it has that little band which across the top is reflective so when light hits it it'll reflect and it's a safer alternative to using these for accident scenes because if you have a road flare and a wrecked vehicle that is leaking fuel and that fuel is slowly trickling downhill to that flare then obviously bad things can happen, but if it's trickling down to one of these glow sticks that doesn't produce any flames or anything, fuel can get all over it and you're not going to worry about any type of fire. For tactical purposes, um, you can use these to mark rooms that you've um, your team's already gone on, gone inside and cleared. Um, so if you've ever seen like a SWAT team and they got like a whole mess of these things kind of like hanging off of them, that's what those things are generally for. They'll take them, throw them into a room as they move along. Think of like a, a, a big building, like a hospital or a school. Um, as they go down that hallway and they stack up on that door and boom, they all move in, clear left, clear right. Uh, they'll pop a glow stick, leave it in that room and continue on. That way if they have a secondary team come in, that secondary team will see these rooms with glow sticks and know, okay, well we don't have to waste our time stacking up on this door or going in. Someone's already been there. Those smaller ones that I talked about, the fishing ones, um, those um, are kind of popular. Um, I wouldn't say popular, but uh, maybe gaining popularity because you can carry a crap ton more of those things um, on you and they serve the same purpose and work just as good. You can mark people with these. Obviously the intent for this type of product um, or this line of product was to um, mark little kids for Halloween. But you can also, um, uh, like when I do low light um, firearms classes, I'll take glow sticks and safety pin them to people's backs. That way when we're on the firing line, I can see all the students. And if I got 10 students and I see 10 little green glow sticks on the firing line, I know all my 10 students are there. Um, if one of the students happens to walk a little bit um, further forward of the firing line because they can't see the ground very well, it's dark or whatever, um, myself and other students are going to be able to see that glow stick and know 
that someone's a little too far ahead of the firing line and they don't need to be shooting. For natural disasters like floods, um, glow sticks could be used uh, to attach to people so that if they fall into flood water and they're floating downstream, you can still see them. I actually used to use these when I did sw uh, swift water rescue. Uh, the helmets we used were the uh, the pencil helmets and they had these little vent holes on the side of them. So I took these and I zip tied them to those vent holes on the side of the helmet on each side because I knew um, or hoped rather that my head was going to be above water at all times and um, if I was in the river and for some reason um, I wasn't able to you know like clip into a tension diagonal or something and I went past that then hopefully the people downstream of me um, would have a visual reference of these two little glowing things going down, down going down river and would have a, a general um, reference on where to throw the throw bags I also had them attached to the shoulders of my PFD um, and I kept them up up high because if you put them on just the torso area of the PFD um, you know you're going to be in the water and most of your PFD is going to be underwater anyway so I preferred um, one the helmet because I I know or like I said hope that my head was going to be above water for sure and that was going to be a good uh, place to mount it but secondary to that would be high up on the shoulders so if you live in a floodplain area um, you know your family's on the roof or something waiting for rescue to come uh, you know you can go ahead and and uh, safety pin these or attach these to the people put them on their shirts or something like that if you got your life jackets go ahead and attach them to those and if they fall in the water and start going downstream at least there's light on them and rescuers or other people can see them and be able to hopefully fish them back in um, those are basically all the uses uh, for them that, that I had written down um, next I'll just kind of go through some little hacks so to speak um, on how you can make these things uh, work better for you so I took zip ties and just regular scotch tape just attach some zip ties to the packaging of these that way if I need to zip tie this light to something or create a loop so that I can you know hang it off something or, or whatever I got the means to do so and I know that the zip tie is going to be a pretty good sturdy option it's not going to be like a little flimsy string that could easily rip it's going to take some force to break this uh, zip tie and some force to rip the eyelid open so you can take zip ties, tape them to your packages. Another thing that you can do is take cordage. And I have a couple like this. I just didn't bring them out and put them on the tabletop. But you can take some cordage and you wrap it around the package. That way, when you pull the light out, you can take your cordage and tie it into the eyelet of this and tie it off and then create a buzz saw which I'll talk about here in a second. Another thing uh, that you can do is you can take some duct tape and attach it to one side of the glow stick so that way when you're using this glow stick for reading purposes it's dark I want to read you know this label or whatever um, as it is right now since this is omnidirectional I now have light going back into my eyes but if you put duct tape on one side then you create a shield and you direct the light into one direction so you can take just a simple strip of uh, duct tape either go um, a little bit close to half off And just apply it like so and then now instead of having full 360 light shining back into your face now you just have a sliver of light that's shining outwards there was a product out there I forgot the name of it it was basically a, uh, a little plastic housing that you could slide these things into and you could twist it and it would do the same concept here it would just when you twisted it shut 
there was no light coming out at all you twist it slightly and because of the way it was it was curved on the inside you twist it and it was like a little shutter opening so it, it start really slow down here and you have a little sliver of light and the more you twisted the more of one side that you would, would expose and have more light coming out and then when you wanted no light you just twisted it and it would close that little window like i said i don't remember the name of those products um i don't know if they make them anymore but they were some pretty neat little things uh, a buzz saw so the buzz saw that i've talked about is you can take a cordage string 550 cord whatever tie it to the eyelet on the end and spin it really fast and it will create a circular sh glowing shape that is nothing like anything that you would find in nature and something like that could be seen like a mile away so you take about a two foot three foot length of paracord tied into your glow stick spin it super fast and you just create one big uh, glowing circle that can be seen by uh, aircraft from a very very long distance and if they're using night vision they're going to see it from an even further distance than what they would with their naked eye you can also take glow sticks and just drop the whole thing into a bottle of water or a big jar of water and create kind of like a lantern type of effect I'm going to turn the lights off and then I'm going to activate some of these glow sticks well I just knocked the chair over because there's no light so you snap the light and you shake it and you get light so this is the glow stick that I took and put duct tape over so as you can see lots of light coming out one end but since I got the duct tape on the other end not so much now I'm not blinding my eyes as I'm reading what I need to read or look at so you can just kind of see Hopefully the camera can adjust and you can look you can see the words on there But if I turn it this direction, it's probably flooding the lens out just like it would your eyes and You're not able to, to see as much as you can if you shield one part of it One thing that I forgot to mention, but I'll do it right now is um, You can create kind of like a flashlight uh, type of effect by keeping the glow stick in its foil package cut one end of the foil package off and only push just a little bit of the glow stick towards the end and you kind of create like a little flashlight type of effect and i'll go ahead and do that for you so i'm cutting off the end of the foil package you can go ahead and snap the glow stick inside the package itself you don't have to take it all the way out once you do that, you can push inside the package or push the, the tube kind of out towards the end. And right now, this is not wanting to cooperate with me, probably because I got that tape wrapped around it for the zip tie. There we go. So you just push the end of the glow stick out just a little bit. It's in the full package. And now I am using it just like a flashlight. So if I wanted to read this package, boom. Now I got like a little little glow light just for reading. So electricity goes out at night. You got a book. You just leave the glow stick inside the full package, snap it, have the end stick out just a little bit, and then you can read. Or if you, you know, want to go ahead and decrease the amount of light coming out, just stick it back inside the package, close the end up, and reduce the amount of light that's coming out. Or 
take it all the way out. However you want to do it. This is the Walmart uh, Kim Light. So this is the Walmart Kim Light. Um, I don't know the age on this. The age on this Kim Light right here, I don't know when it was made, but the expiration on the package says 2016. And at time of recording, it is um, February 2020, about to be March, and this thing still produces a decent amount of light. This package right here is going to be your um, your more commercial, like little kitty toy kind of stuff. Move these out of the way. These are just the little tubes to make a little bracelet out of. Um, they have a lot more snappy, breaky stuff in them. So you can just kind of go along the entire body of the little tubes, bend them back and forth, hear them snapping and cracking, and then just shake them a little bit and let the chemicals mix. And even for a little kitty toy, even for a little kitty toy, like this still produces enough light that you could pop a couple of these, leave them in the hallway of your house and still have enough ambient light so that you can get up in the middle of the night, walk down the hallway to the bathroom or walk out the back door or whatever and not stub your toe on stuff. This would even be something uh, because it is a dimmer, softer glow than your other uh, industrial grade. This would be something you could keep inside your tent at night and um, even, depending on uh, which one of these you get, um, you can even, you know, put these out towards the, uh, the flap of your tent so you know where the door is at um, or just throw them in the corners and they can still produce, like I said, a sufficient amount of light to where you're not stubbing your toe on stuff and it's soft on the eyes, it's not bright, or what have you. These Kim lights will come in different um, intensities. So generally, you can get about 12 hours out of a Kim light. Uh, your higher intensity lights, when you snap them, the light that comes out is a lot more intense but they last for a shorter period of time. They'll last um, probably about uh, six hours and the real, real high intensity ones, um, they'll burn for like maybe an hour or so, just putting off a lot of bright light. These, they just kind of last for, uh, you know, a few hours um, and then they're done with. You can get um, these in, uh, an assortment of different colors. Green and yellow is generally the kind of the good uh, go-to lighting option, so to speak. You can also get white, you get orange, you can get red and blue, uh, and then you can also get infrared chem lights. And infrared, you, you cannot see with your naked eye. You have to have night vision with them. Uh, funny story with that, I heard a story about these guys who were given a box of, um, of uh, chem lights and they were told to take their Humvee um, down this airstrip and um, light um, or snap the, the chem sticks and drop them along uh, the edges of the airstrip so that the planes coming in could see the airstrip and know where to land and um, these guys <laughs> they, um, they they go to crack these chem lights and there's no glow coming out of them <laughs> and because they're infrared uh, glow sticks and they just go through and they just like snap like the entire box trying to find some sticks that actually work <laughs> and none of them are glowing for them and they go back to their boss and they're like hey man these things are like expired or something they're not working 
Um, and lo and behold, they're infrared glow sticks. I always thought that was a <laughs> really, a really funny story. Um, I will go ahead, the last thing I'll do before I end this video is I'm going to go ahead and take this glow stick here. I'm going to take the cordage, stick it all through. And I'm going to um, readjust the camera, point it towards the uh, door frame over there and we'll stand over there. I'm going to create the buzz saw action for you. That way you can kind of see uh, what that looks like on camera and maybe get an idea of what that would look like in real life. I know the camera is not going to do it any justice the way it would if you were seeing it with your naked eye, but I can assure you that when you take a glow stick and you attach some paracord to it in about um, two feet, three feet of length, and you start spinning that thing super fast, you're gonna see that from a real far distance. Trust me, I know I've done it. So that was the buzz saw with glow sticks. That is pretty much it for the chemiluminescence video. Um, oh, one more thing, um, oh, sizes. So I talked about the little tiny ones. You can actually also get uh, some really big glow sticks that are probably like that long. And these are impact glow sticks. You don't have to like hold them and snap them. You can just take the whole long stick and like throw it up against the wall and it'll it'll break and it'll start glowing. Those things are pretty cool. Um, I came across those and they're really neat. Um, some utility companies will use those big old things and they'll take a nail and run the nail into the eyelet uh, on one end of those big O things and they'll nail a big O uh, glow stick to the light pole as a light source when they're up there working on stuff. Um, but of course those are going to be just a little bit more expensive than what these smaller ones are. Sorry that just came off the top of my head. Uh, if you have any questions, comments about what you have saw on this video, uh, go right ahead, leave them in the comment section, or send me a message. The best way to get uh, good responses out of me is when I share this video to my Facebook page. I will be uh, quicker to respond to comments on there. Uh, from the YouTube uh, side of the platform, I don't get on there enough to read messages or read comments. So if you leave me a bunch of comments on there in the form of questions, I may not get to it as quick as I would. Um, if you just go to my Facebook page at Primordial Defense and look for the video that I share on there, uh, I'll be more apt to respond to those messages, messages and questions a lot quicker because it's just something I'm on a lot more. Go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel and go ahead and subscribe to my Facebook page as well for more content uh, like this and better. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense, thank you for watching.